Hello, I'm Stephen Ballast, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I'm using a computer and DAW to mix our video streams audio and use a physical mixer as the control surface. First, let's talk about why I'm using a DAW instead of a physical mixer to do this. The answer is pretty simple, cost. When we installed an Allen & Heath DLive mixer in our main sanctuary, I needed a way to duplicate the same 128 channel capability for our broadcast mix. And that would have taken a pretty pricey mixer, if not a whole second DLive system to accomplish which financially wasn't gonna happen in that project. The DLive replaced this Yamaha DM2000, and originally I was planning on using it with its 96 channel capability for our broadcast mix through a Dante network. But I quickly found out that it can only support four Dante cards, which would limit me to 64 channels, which is half of what I needed and was a little too much to give up. So it got me thinking, I was already using a computer to multi-track record 128 channels into Reaper, using a Focusrite Rednet card off the Dante network, why couldn't I use Reaper to mix live? And that's what I ended up doing, and it's working great. Let's take a look at how all this works. All of our audio channels come from front of house on the Dante network. These are split using the DLive's tie lines feature, so all 128 channels come straight off the preamps of the DLive onto the Dante network. The Rednet card in a PC brings those 128 channels into Reaper. Then, through MIDI, I've mapped all the channels and buses in Reaper to faders on the Yamaha DM2000. So the operator has hands-on control with faders and mute buttons while they're doing their live mix of our broadcast feed. An advantage I discovered to this setup over a physical mixer is you can run Waves plugins natively on the computer running the DAW, rather than having to set up a SoundGrid server, switch, and I.O. card that you would need with a physical mixer. So the entrance fee, so to speak, to using Waves plugins live is also much lower with this setup. All right, here are some of the nuts and bolts of how this works and a few gotchas to look out for. I don't use the computer that is mixing audio for the stream to multi-track record. So while you could simultaneously record and mix, I wanted to take that potential for a hiccup out. That meant when I spec the computer, it wasn't about the hard drive speed or size, but rather the CPU horsepower and RAM. If you have less channel count and aren't planning on running lots of plugins, you could easily make do with a lot less of a computer. Your biggest hurdle in this setup will be latency. Latency is the amount of time that passes from when your computer takes an audio signal in until it sends it back out. You'll want to have as low latency as possible so your audio doesn't get out of sync with your video. A recommendation I would make is don't rely on Dante Virtual Sound Card, which uses the computer's ethernet port to make this work. This puts all the processing of the incoming audio on your computer's CPU, which means you'll have to use larger buffers to avoid dropouts. The Focusrite Rednet card only adds three milliseconds of total latency from the input to the output of the card. We run our video at 60 frames per second, so if we can stay under 16 milliseconds of latency, we won't even be a frame delayed from our video. Any other added latency is gonna come from Reaper, and that solution is pretty simple. Avoid any plugins that add latency. The way Reaper works, in order to keep all the channels time aligned, it delays every channel to the slowest channel. While it may be tempting to use free VST plugins you've downloaded off the internet, and I have found some that are zero latency, most of these will introduce some latency. The EQ and compressor that come with Reaper are zero latency plugins, so those will work great. Also, Waves makes a number of low latency or zero latency plugins that can work really well. Stick with those and be picky about the latency of your plugins and you should be fine. One of the great things I've discovered about Yamaha digital mixing consoles is their MIDI integration. They have hooks into just about everything, which makes them great consoles to use as control surfaces for your DAW. In the DM2000, I've mapped all my faders, mute buttons, and pan knobs to MIDI control channels. I'm just using a simple USB to MIDI device to get the MIDI into the computer, and that's connected to the MIDI output of the DM2000. In Reaper, you need to enable the MIDI device for control messages. This is under Preferences, Audio, MIDI Devices, and then select Enable the MIDI Device for Input Control Messages. Next, you map the incoming MIDI messages from the DM2000 to the controls you want in Reaper. This is found under Actions, Show Action List. Then search for the parameter you want, for example, Set Track Volume. Then select Track 1, click Add and move Fader 1 on the DM2000, and now they're mapped together. When I move Fader 1 on the DM2000, I'm controlling Fader 1 in Reaper. 
It's a little tedious to map the entire console this way, but it's a one-time thing that you can save in a Reaper key map file. One limitation I did run into is that Reaper will only map 99 set track volume channels. In order to control all my channels, I had to get a little creative by grouping some channels in Reaper so that only one fader in the DM2000 is needed for those grouped channels. And for some obscure channels that I don't use as often, I just leave those in Reaper to be controlled through the mouse when needed. So what ended up for me being the cost of a computer and a Rednet card, I'm mixing 128 channels for my broadcast feed live through Reaper. With the HP Z640, I've loaded up a ton of Waves plugins and have yet to experience any issues with dropouts. It's turned out to be a really great cost-effective solution for our broadcast mix. Thanks for watching this video. Let me know if these videos are helpful for you, and if you've got any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment. Thanks.